The Mission. The butler's hand slid away from the curtain, and he crumpled to the ground. Behind him stood another silhouette, shorter and rounder. Michael? The shadow whispered. It was my mother. I stepped out from the curtains, my heart still racing, and almost tripped on the prone form of the butler on the floor. My mother was a small, dimple-cheeked woman with her brown hair cut short and curled, wearing a simple but elegant green dress. I was almost as tall as she was, and we were both definitely smaller than the butler. Did you... I started to ask, but I could see the butler's chest rising and falling. He wasn't dead, just asleep. Ma held up her handkerchief. Chloroform. I always keep a bottle in my handbag for emergencies. Did you get it? I got it. But what about him? I asked, nodding at the butler. What was he doing in here? Did he see you? No, he came in and poured himself a drink. Ma smiled. Likes to have a nip of the good stuff, does he? Can't blame a soul for that. But I'm afraid he's going to get in trouble for it this time. Help me drag him to the chair. Together, we wrestled the butler into the reading chair beside the table, and Ma took a bottle from the table and poured some of it on his shirt before leaving the bottle in his hands. They'll think he had one too many, poor dear, but it's the only way to cover our tracks. Let's go. Ma and I went back to the table where everyone had moved on from dessert to cigarettes and coffee. All I wanted was to get out of the house before the butler upstairs was discovered, before anyone could suspect that we'd had anything to do with it. But if we left right away, we would look even more suspicious. Ma gave Da a slight nod to let him know the business was done, and we settled in to listen to our host boasting about Germany's success in the war. Poland, France, Luxembourg, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, they have all fallen in the great German avalanche that is sweeping Europe. And once the Sixth Army prevails in Stalingrad, Soviet Russia too will fall. And after Russia, we shall finally defeat the English. There were smiles all around, except from my family. My father cleared his throat, and my mother looked at her plate. But not our friends in Ireland, of course, who have remained steadfastly neutral throughout the war, our host said magnanimously, raising a glass to my father. Da smiled politely and returned the toast. We all knew that being neutral hadn't helped Denmark, Norway, Belgium, the Netherlands, or Luxembourg when the Nazis decided they wanted those countries. Germany had overrun them all shortly after invading Poland in 1939, just a year after Kristallnacht, setting off a world war. Now, four years into the war, the Germans were after Russia and England, who were holding them off only with the help of the Americans. But Ireland had just won its independence from England before the war, so we decided to sit this one out which was why we still had an embassy in Berlin when hardly any other country did. But we were under no delusions. If Germany ever wanted I Ireland, they would help themselves. I think it's time we were going, Da said, putting his napkin on the table. We want to be getting home before the Allies start dropping their bombs on Berlin again. That shut them up quick. It was a chilly reminder that not everything was coming up roses for Germany, and I loved my da all the more for saying it. Everyone else stirred to leave. Send for the butler, the lady of the house, told one of the servants. Ma rose quickly. We'll see ourselves out. Thank you for a lovely evening. Soon we had made our escape and were in the car on the way back to the embassy. I assume you two had something to do with the missing butler, Da asked as he drove. Michael ran into a spot of trouble, Ma said, but it's nothing we couldn't straighten out. Da thumped the steering wheel. Damnation, Megan! I don't like using Michael in this business. It's dangerous. What if he'd been caught? He wasn't, Ma said, and even if they're suspicious, they won't find anything missing, will they, Michael? I shook my head. Ma gave me a pleased look and pulled a small notepad and pencil from her handbag. Here. Not that you're likely to forget it, but write it out so we'll have it down. I took the pencil and paper and copied out the long strings of numbers exactly as I had seen them.
I could remember them as though I was looking at a photograph in my own head. It was a trick I'd been able to do ever since I could remember. I handed the notebook back with the numbers written out. What is it? I asked. The location of a new engine factory, Ma said, tucking it away. Da sighed. I'll get them sent out in tomorrow's diplomatic pouch to Dublin. I sat back in my seat, proud that I was doing something at last, something to fight back against the Nazis, something to make up for that night four years ago when I'd felt so helpless and for every night in between. I had found the secret codes and memorized them. Ma had covered my tracks. Tonight she would decode them, and in the morning Da would send the coordinates back to Dublin using a secret code of his own. There, Irish intelligence even though they were supposed to be neutral, would secretly pass along the location to the British. And a week from now, maybe two, Allied bombers would fly over that hidden German engine factory and bomb it back to the Stone Age. This was the mission. This was the secret my parents had shared with me four years ago on Kristallnacht. Ireland might have officially been neutral, but unofficially, its ambassador to Germany and his family were spies for the Allies.